In today's video, you're gonna learn how to create more concept like these using two different methods. What's going on everybody? My name is Carter and welcome back to Design It Green. Today we are going over a common problem that all designers face at some point in their life in their creative process. And that is coming up with a concept for your design. Coming up with a concept for your design is often one of the hardest things to do because in the very beginning of your design process. And since this is one of the first things you do in that process, it's always taught that the concept is your main driving piece that's gonna guide your entire project down the road. So because of this, we can tend to get enamored on what this concept is supposed to be and it can ultimately hurt our creative process in the beginning and also could box us into something that we're not ready to fully develop yet. But I'm here today to give you guys two different methods to think about when you need to start creating some ideas after you've been given a site. Now for the purposes of this video, we're gonna use my last project site that I had as a senior in college. So my site was located in downtown Boston along the Greenway. And for those of you who don't know anything about the Greenway in Boston, it was essentially a revolutionary project in the 90s known as the Big Dig. Now the Big Dig was a mega project that rerouted the central artery of Interstate 93 into a mile and a half tunnel that went through the heart of downtown Boston. So as a result of the leftover highway, the Greenway was ultimately formed. So that space is now a 17 acre green ribbon that has become the focal point of the downtown area. So what my task was from the client was to take these two districts at the bottom of the Greenway and make a stronger connection from Chinatown to the North End. So knowing all of that, the first method that I always go to is if a concept can be site driven. Now the site driven concept can be anything from site history, where it's located, what are its boundaries, and anything other that is significant about our site's location. So in my case, there was two very significant things that stood out on my site. For site history, of course, it was the big dig and that the highway now runs completely under the space we are designing for. And the second happens to be its location. It's located directly adjacent to South Station, which is a main artery and main hub for all public transportation going in and out of downtown Boston. So what occurred to me knowing the site's history and its location was that there was this movement layering effect that had taken place in downtown Boston. So you have the highway movement at its lowest point, and then you have the bus and transit system somewhere in the middle, and then at the surface level, we have our pedestrian movement. So this idea led me to a concept that I called the social line. And the social line was simply just from understanding my site and understanding what was around me and the implications of where I was. You can see how by understanding the site and being able to take that analysis and abstract it, I was able to make these bolder blanket statements about the site as a whole. Now you're not always gonna be given a great site and your site might have nothing significant about it at all, so you're not gonna be able to make some concepts about them. So my next method that I like to go to is a client or program driven concept. Here we try and consider what the client wants and what the client needs in their program and see if there's anything significant that we can pull out of there to generate a theme or idea from. So in my case, my client indicated a lot of different program elements, but something that was stressed and stood out to me was the idea of having vegetable gardens in downtown Boston. So I did a quick Google search of how vegetable gardens are laid out and how they typically work in a public environment. And one of the things I noticed about how vegetable gardens are laid out is they tend to be very grid-like. So this was something that I then abstracted and took form in for a concept. So in vegetable gardens, each grid is essentially a different type of vegetable. But in my case, each part of the grid along these two parcels was a different program element. So my concept became about rectilinear and geomorphic form from the basic kind of vegetable garden idea. So these are two concepts that I had in the very beginning of my design process in my senior year thesis project. Now, what was great about this was I had multiple concepts to choose from, so I was able to ultimately choose the stronger and better concept for me. And that ended up being the social line concept just because it had a really, really strong foundation and seemed to really, really make sense with everything else that was considered at the site at that time. But nonetheless, those are two different concepts that I was able to come up with 
using those methods that I just talked about. And I know this was a very specific scenario, but I wanted to present this in this specific way because in school, you're never really taught how to take that analysis of the site or the client and pull it out and help use it to guide your design decisions and build concepts from. So I was hoping that through explaining my process, you are then able to see how that research and see how that analysis plays out and gets me thinking about how to take some concepts from it. So to summarize all this for you, when you are generating concepts, there are two things to generally think about. Consider where your site is, what it is, and what it was. Consider your client's needs and its program elements. This is gonna be the easiest way for you to come up with multiple concept ideas because they're all real ideas. Everything about the site was or is a real thing and anything that the client says they want or they need or the program elements are very, very real and very realistic. I hope that helps break it down and I hope that I was able to help some of you guys out there who sometimes struggle with the early phases of the design process and getting some big ideas and concepts out there. That person is and still often is me, so I totally understand where you guys are and the struggle that it can be to create some concepts. So please feel free to reach out with some additional questions or want to shoot off some ideas without the pressure of your clients, your professors, or your colleagues. But that's all for today's video. So if you did enjoy it, please hit that like button. It helps push this content out to others and helps me know that this information was helpful to you guys. And be sure to check out my other content here on YouTube for more as well. But anyways, thank you guys for listening. Be safe and I'll see you next time.